Welcome to another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. It is Froggy Wednesdays, and you know what? Every single week we have great guests, and it's no different this week. So much going on in the golf world. We've got so much going on between everybody's still talking about the Phil Saudi thing and how, I mean, guys, uh, what you call it, sponsors seem to just be leaving Phil at a rapid pace. And uh, we had, you know, it's there's so much less talk about the golf. We had a great event this week. Seb Straka gets his first win at the Honda Classic. But it really seems that this Phil talk and the, the whether this Saudi thing is dead in the water, whether it's not, has been such a huge, huge talk. But this week, they're in Orlando at the API, and you can't talk about the Arnold Palmer Invitational and not talk about Matt Every. I mean, it's just you will forever be married to the Arnold Palmer Invitational, man. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, you got it. I will be forever married to that place. It's okay. But, you know. I mean, you really, I mean, to, to win that event, Arnie was still with us at the time. You got to meet Arnie. Can you just talk to us? What, what What's it like to win not once, but win twice back to back? You've got to have some great Arnie stories coming out of there. It was weird. Uh, the first year that I won, I was playing well and I, I knew something good was going to happen for me. I had a ton of, a ton of, not a ton. Of, I probably had a few looks on the West Coast. Came into Florida. My game was really good. And it just happened. Um, I, I'd known Arnie for a while because uh, Sam Saunders is a good buddy of mine. And he was always super to me. Um, always had time. Just a, a great a great guy. I will, I will say the first year I won, I was a little bummed. They went away from the sword trophy. Do you remember that? How, yeah. You know? And uh, it was. it's kind of like a regular trophy now, but still – like still can't believe it sometimes and then sometimes it's like damn, i feel like a loser like i should have done more um and i still can i'm still young um but ah what a game it really is a, cr- a crazy game tiger had won the, the two years before now did tiger play those two years i know you beat hendrick stenson you beat keegan bradley they were both runner-ups the year that you won did tiger play in 2014 and 2015 no he didn't um, he was, I don't know what was going on with him then, maybe back or something. I'd be, it was Stinson, well, Keegan was there, but it was like Stinson one year, and then Adam Scott had a big lead one year, and I think Keegan caught him too. But, uh, Tiger did not play, which is kind of cool. <laughs> it's cool, cause, like the, the, all the stuff there, it's like Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, Matt every, Matt every, you know, it's like, it's pretty <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, I love that place. I mean, to see or to have your name put anywhere next to his, no matter what it is, is is amazing. But to win back to back, because he had won back to back, so it was four years. We had two champions, and that is not an easy golf course to win on. Is that a golf course that you had played well at before, or did you just kind of catch lightning in a bottle both weekends? Well, I don't think any golf course is easy to win on. It's it's so hard to win on the tour. There's so many good players. Um, I think, like I said, the first year I was playing really well. I think any course I was playing, I was going to do pretty good at. And the next year I'd made some swing changes, like during, during that year between the tournaments, like they were, I felt like they were big ones and it, I was seeing it on the range big time. Like my range sessions were so good. And then I'd get on the course and it would just be, I wouldn't try. And it was just, just little things here and there. Right. And then when I got to Bay Hill, uh, I think the confidence I had from winning the year before matched up to where I was at with my golf game on the range. Freed me up a little, and it kind of came out of nowhere the second win. But getting back to your to what you were saying, I, I don't know if, like, I know there's a big horses for courses thing, but there's so much – so much of that shit goes on in your head. It, it could help me a little bit there because I've had success there. But previously, the years before, not really. I didn't have success there. I mean, maybe like a 20-something or 30-something, right. but nothing, not, not like I was knocking on the door. Right. You know, golf is really such a crazy game. So you you don't think that winning is easy. So we've had some guys on. I know Jason Kokrak had complained that some golf courses are just set up too easy. 
And I, I don't yeah. really, I, I don't think I've, I've, I mean, I'm obviously not anywhere near in the same league that you guys are at golf is absolute music, huge difference, but golf courses are not set up easy. It's not too easy to, to, to win up there. If that was the case, guys would win all the time. Yeah. That's, I don't know if he meant that. If he did, that's stupid. Um, even if it's set up easy, it doesn't mean it's easy to win. There's still like 140 great players that you have to right. beat. It's easy for everybody. If it's easy for you, it's easy for everybody. I went and played a miniature golf course with 140 pro tour pros. It would not be easy to win that tournament either. Um, it's uh, yeah, it is a crazy game. Some courses do get set up a little easy, and they're kind of at the mercy of uh, like the time of the year, the weather. You know, a lot of people last week at Honda. A lot of people don't realize that they overseed that place. It's it's warm down there. And so you have to soak that overseed for it to grow. And so you're dealing with mud balls. That place is like notorious for mud balls. Um, then you get the firm greens and it's kind of guessing there. I don't know. It's, it's I did a crazy easy. finish where it started raining like hell. I mean, all of a sudden when, when Seb struck a teed off on 18, it wasn't raining. By the time he got to the green on 18, it was raining sideways. I mean, I didn't, you gotta, I, you have to be able to play in every single element there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that sucks. Well, it worked out for Sep, but I didn't yeah. see the. Uh, I was playing. I was playing at Seminole. Um, <laughs> Not bragging or anything. Now, did did you play in the Monday event at Seminole? Yeah, I did. I played with my buddy Thad Eshelman. He's a member. We're both members back home at Pablo together, and he's a total dude. Dude, we had a great time. It was one of the best. It was my first time playing that event. I'd turn it down a few times with some guys just because of where it was in the schedule. You're on the West Coast and you go to Honda and like I, you're gone for seven weeks. And yeah, it is a cool place, but right. I wish I'd played it. I, I do regret that because uh, it was it was such a cool experience. Please tell me you got to meet Tom Brady. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm not Could you gay. Please talk him into coming back and playing the Buccaneers uh, one more time, please. I just, I'm a huge Bucks fan. I can't believe he retired. I don't want to believe it's real. I still have this like slight belief he'll come back. I can't either. I, I walked up. Uh, uh, he was on the putting green by himself, which you know normally he's always got somebody bothering him, and I just was like, all right, I'm going to do this right now. I just went up and shook his hand. Hey, Tom and Matt, you know, we talked for like maybe 30 seconds. But what a freaking unit. I mean, that guy's massive. He's bigger than I thought he was. I knew he really? was tall. Like, he's just a unit. His legs are like, that was, it shocked me. It did. Wow, I'm still but, devastated. I, I, I mean, I, I know he can still play. Hell, he's the best quarterback in the league last year. Yeah, and if he is, if he wasn't, he wasn't far from it. I mean, I, I was surprised. Who knows? But he's got, you know, he's done pretty much everything. Yeah, there's not much else to prove if you're Tom Brady. At this point, you've pretty much proven you can do it all and that you are the man. Yeah. He is definitely the undisputed goat of sports. There's really absolutely nothing you can, there's really no argument. And he's, so, he's, uh, he's what now? He's so pretty. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's yeah he he's definitely the whole package. He's got it all going for him. Yeah, that's unreal. Well, um, moving on this week, you're playing the uh, playing the playing the Puerto Rico this yeah. week. Now, there's not usually a B event to the Arnold Palmer. What, right. what do you know? What the reason was the change for that this year? Uh, I do not. Um, didn't they get rid of some World Golf events or maybe shrunk a few of those? Usually this, so, event yeah. opposite, usually this event is opposite a world golf event. Um, I don't know why they did. Now, were you hoping to get into the, to, to the API field or were you, or were you Puerto Rico all, you know, the entire time knowing you were going to play this event? Uh, no, I was, I don't know. I didn't write for an exemption into Bay Hill. I played really bad. Sponsor invites. Yeah. So you can write in for one, you can call the tournament director. There's all different kinds of ways. I mean, most of the time it's up to the, the sponsor has picks and then there's some politics involved for sure. Um, some weeks I'm more than others. You know, 
I do, I do have a history with that place. It's a very special place for, to me, but that tournament's not about me. And I played terrible last year. I don't know if I really deserved a sponsor invite, to be honest. And so I didn't write for one. I told, I told Sam uh, Saunders, you know, to pass along to his dad. I would love to play if they want to give me an invite. But if they don't, like, I will love them the same as I do before. And I just didn't work out this year. Um, so I am in Puerto Rico, but I'm really excited to play. I haven't played in a while. And I'm actually playing pretty good, and I uh, definitely feel like I'm in a different spot mentally than I was the pretty much last year. Well, you know, Matt, you 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 bring up a good point in that, and and I definitely don't want to talk about anything that you don't want to talk about. But let's get into that. You you said you haven't played in a while, and you are mentally in a better place. And mental health, rightfully so, has taken such a a, a huge spot in the forefront of people talking about in America, and it's a good thing people are talking about mental health. How did that affect your golf game? And was there a time that you really just, pardon my, didn't give a shit about golf? There's so much that goes into it for me. Um, Kenny, I don't even know where to start, really. It's like, is there a time where, like, I've, I feel like I was going through the motions for quite some time out there. Uh, and that's not a good there's, spot to just just like showing up and playing. Yeah, I mean, they're more than that. It's not like I was just going to the first tee. I mean, I was warming up. But, like, uh, these guys out – the majority of these guys out here are eat, sleeping, and breathing it. And I was not even close to that. Uh, and it's – you can't compete. Like, it's not like I'm getting younger. So, you know, just life – get older and get – different things become important in, in life. And, and not not just that, but, like – I don't know. It's just, I always, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, sometimes you just need a break. I, I knew for me when I got done last year on, I played those corn fairy playoffs and I actually felt like I played one event. I did not play good, but I, there was numerous events last year where I played pretty good on Thursday and Friday. And I would, I would just find ways to miss cuts and I would be, I would sit there and think like, I feel like I should be leading before I miss this cut. Like, that's how I felt, felt like I played. So it's clearly an attitude thing. Uh, I just, there's no break from golf either. You just constantly kind of just get beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up. And then it's like, fuck, I got to get my feet up, man. Like, like right. I'm just washed. It's like a, a set of wind coming and you're just getting crushed after every one trying to paddle back out. I needed a break. Uh, so I've had about five months where um, I've been able to, like, you know, get my feet under me. Uh, I played the Monday qualifier for Honda last week, and I played very mediocre. Like, I didn't hit it great. I did make some putts. But I was five under with five to go, and five under was a playoff. And, like, and I, th I think I was there because my I just I wanted to be on the golf course, and for me that that's a big deal. Um, so if I, if I like genuinely want to be there or like I'm hungry, I think things are going to be okay for me going forward. How much of golf would you say is like you said it's mental versus you're just not hitting it well? It's your stroke, it's your swing. How how much of it yeah. is mental versus that? A lot, a lot, like. Like when I would play in college, if I had like a paper due and we were on the road, it would mess with me a little bit. Well, it's kind of the same shit when you're an adult. Like it's just, it's the same thing. Um, it's like you can just simplify everything. And if I could forget a lot of things, I'd be way better off. Do you know how to do that? Like erase stuff from your brain? Yeah, no, it's tough. It's it's hard when you've got when you're standing over a putt that you know you need to make. I mean, you're obviously it's in your mind you need to make this, but at the same time, whether you've got something going on with your personal life or relationship, or you've got something you've got a bill that's due, or you need to even if you I need to make this money to be able to pay this bill that I have. You've got other things going on in your mind, and now you're not able to give a hundred percent to what you're doing, which is all. Let's be honest, golf is hard if you don't have anything else going on. Yeah, it is. 
It is. And then you'll try and like think about like, well, what was I thinking about when I was playing good? Right. Nothing. That's what I was thinking about. Right. <laughs> Just, I mean, is there a correlation there where you do go back and say, you know what, when I was playing well, it was because I was carefree and I wasn't worried about everything. I was obsessed when I was playing well. That's what it was. Obsessed with I golf. Was obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. E- that's what it is. Le- like, I mean, you, you know, you, you said that too, and that's something else I wanted to get back to that the guys that are out there now, the guys that are at the top, and it's just not, not just necessarily the guys that are winning, but the guys that are playing well on the tour, those guys literally golf never, I mean, they don't go days and not pick up a golf club, right? They're, they're doing something every single day. I would think so. Yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a day here or there, but I would think they're doing something for sure. I was too. I mean, I still do like, I work in the out, five months that you took off. Have you played golf? Oh, did you play golf every day or every, or uh, maybe not close? No, I probably didn't play golf most of it. Um, but I knew I was going to either be getting into Bay Hill or Puerto Rico. So a few weeks ago, I started, you know, taking it a little more serious and practicing mm-hmm. probably five to 10 rounds with buddies, just nothing more than warming up 15 minutes before I go. And then getting on the first tee uh but it's kind of nice to to uh i have a totally different outlook on things right now than i did last year let me ask you this what is it because we all know golf is hard all right and there's absolutely no doubt whether you're playing with your buddies on a saturday morning or you're playing at the highest level golf freaking hard what is it that makes professional golf so hard is is it the game plus the people that you're playing against? No, I never really think about the guys I'm playing against, uh, unless you were like Sunday and it's like a match play thing. But, um, and the game is just freaking hard. And then you're playing, you are playing against like world-class players. There's no booger eaters on the tour. So, uh, yeah, it's just competition. I mean, it's so deep. It's so deep. And there's just, there's not a lot of room on the tour. I mean, uh, gotta be, you gotta be a badass. I mean, the guy that finishes average 140, say 140th every week, which is not good. That guy would yeah. absolutely smoke anybody at a local course any day of the week, every single day by ton. Oh, probably. That's how good the tour is. That's how deep it is. Well, yeah, I don't even know if that's like a fair, like, it may, the guy that finishes 140th on the the web tour would smoke everyone probably. Really? Yeah. Kidding me? Yes. It really is insane how hard it is. So let me ask you this. What are your expectations heading into this week? I mean, you've always got to be realistic, and I know yeah. that I'm too many realistic. times people say, oh, Tiger showed up only because he was going to win, but not everybody feels that way. Yeah, I'm being realistic. I want to win this week. Um, I don't see why I can't. I know, like, my good stuff is really good. I've seen it. Uh, I just got to stay present as long as hard as as, I just got to be present here and uh, trick myself into loving this place. Now, let me ask you this. Have you have you had some professional help in trying to get you back to being focused? Or is this something that you're, you know, trying to, trying to just navigate on your own? No. I mean, sure. Uh, both. Um, I've been navigating this on my own for 30 years. Uh, I, yeah, I do. I talk to, yeah, like my whole career. Yeah, I mean, that's smart. I mean, you hear about people having sports psychologists now, and a lot of people don't understand, but that's it's such a super important part of the puzzle because golf is in your head. Billy was a sports one. I had a sports one for a minute. He was great, but I I just don't, I don't know. I, I, we, it never really came down to like a sports thing for me. It was right compartmentalizing more than anything. Right. Um, but like I've been hypnotized before, um, I've I've done it all, dude. <laughs> Do you feel like you're better for it for the road that you've been on? 
Uh, wait, how so? Like, do in I other words, wish I... in other words, you know, back in you know 2014, 2015, you win. If things had just taken off and you had had, had been you know playing great the whole time, versus where you are now, are you thankful for the road that you've been on because you've learned a lot more about yourself and learned a lot more about the game? Yeah, I mean, I know plenty about myself. Uh, I wish I would have played better for sure. Um, but I still think that there's like a ton of time for me. It's not, I don't, there's no physical issues. Um, and there's really, I don't have like major, I'm not like crazy on the golf course. I know there's a picture of me at the club, but that anytime there's any kind of like story. You mean that logo, you mean that logo right there or no? (laughs) Anytime my name gets brought up, they run that picture with my name and then it just makes me look like some like psycho on the golf course and well i do want to admit your form in that throw is pretty epic i mean that is that form is perfect the lag that you've got with that with with, with, the, with that right hand throw i mean it's yeah. it really is something special yeah i mean i yeah i got if you're gonna get fined for throwing them you might as well get your money's worth because you know if they're they're not going by the yard out there no, they don't. What? Where exactly was that throw, and in, in 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 what tournament? It was on. It was at the Byron Nelson at Trinity. I finished second that week at Trinity Forest. Uh, I don't remember. It was like fourteen, maybe thirteen. It was a par five, and there was this pot bunker in the middle of the fairway. Not a pot bunker. There was a bunker in the middle of the fairway, and it was like whatever the carry on it was. It was like perfect for me like i needed to to get it to get over it mm-hmm. and i thought i got it and i was like seven i might have been seven or eight under for the day going into that hole and i and it's one of those holes too where if you carry the bunker it rolls like 60 yards and then i got five iron into a par five and i'm gonna make birdie work at worst so mm-hmm. i get up there and it's just buried under the lip i mean like it's one of the, it's awful. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it hit, it, it, it just unbelievable. I mean, I didn't, if I hit a bad shot, I'm, I'm, I own that, I own it every time, whether it's a putt, anything. But like, I, it burns my ass when like I've seed one and just get fisted. And, right. It was a total momentum killer. And now I'm like hacking this thing out and I can barely get it like 10 yards out of the bunker. And it just pissed me off. It, I was running really hot and it was just great. The guy got me at a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how did you, you, you ended up finishing second that week? Did, did that shot end up costing? How many did you lose by? I mean, I think that was like the second round. Uh, I lost by a couple, but I mean, I was, I was even with this dude. It was, it was myself, Sung Kang. I played with Sung Kang all four days that week. Wow. Uh, I remember he made, he made like double the amount of feet of putts I made that week. It was unreal how good he putted. I wow. think I would, I, I think I should have won that golf tournament. So, but <laughs> whatever. We- and I, I noted now last year in November, you did some, you did some work for golf channel at the RSM. Did you enjoy doing that? Yeah. I just did a day for him on Friday. I did enjoy it. Um, I was worried a little bit about saying, um, and like too much. Cause when I do these, I catch myself doing it. Right. A, and I didn't do it once. And I remember like being out there and ne- never once did I think don't say, um, or like it's, you just don't have time to do it. Uh, I was a little nervous to start it the first couple holes, but after that, I think I was fine. I settled in. I was having some mic issues, which was kind of weird. It was, it, it gave me anxiety, but, uh, <laughs> uh, i I figured it out. I think I'm actually working the Byron Nelson as my next event. I don't know. We'll see. You enjoy, you enjoy doing it. Like you see a lot of guys go that route. Did it, did it also uh, fire up your competitive juices a little bit and be like, Hey, you know what? I want to get back out there and play. 
We're wearing masks in Puerto Rico too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I think just being away from it for a little bit has, has fired me up to to go play. Uh, I don't know, like if I'm ready to to be. I I I feel like I've wasted like years, and I, I don't. I I feel like if I like stopped now and went into something full time, I feel like I would be wasting more because I know I have it in me. Um, Are you ready to turn it back on full time? Yeah, yeah. This week, I'm super pumped to play this week. Uh, maybe it might be a blessing I'm not playing Bay Hill this week. Um, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, golf it is tough, but it's something, like you said before, you've got to eat, sleep, breathe it. It's got to be everything. And so if you're willing to turn that back on again, then you can expect to see the results. When you're, as you put it into your own words, just going through the motions, you know you're not going to get anything out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the short story. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it's hard, but 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 getting getting back out there. And do you think when you when you do get back out there and you do get in the thick of, of, of a lead on, on a Saturday, maybe, maybe, maybe you sleep on a 54 hole lead. Mm -hmm. Do you think there will be some competitive juices that you haven't felt in a long time that'll wake up and go like, Hey, wait a second. I've been here before. I know how to handle this. I'm sure there will be, uh, there's no like better feeling than that. Like than feeling it, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, those, those things are, they only come naturally. Those aren't highs that you can, you, you just got to experience it to experience it. Um, like, you know, for Daniel Berger to sleep on a five shot lead and then cough it up at the Honda. How does, how does one go from, you know, that's obviously difficult. You would think a five shot lead, he had led all week. You think, Hey, I've pretty much got this. I just go out there and shoot a decent round. I've got it. And then it doesn't work that way. There's no way. What'd you say? Say it again. You broke up a little bit. I said, do you really think he was thinking there's no way I can do it? There's no way he was thinking that. I know that I know Burger. He's one of my good buddies out there. And this won't face him at all, but there's no way it's easy to sleep on a five shot lead. Oh, what do you have to gain? I mean, you're supposed to win. You're, you're at five. And then if you don't win, that's how you choked. It's five shots is nothing. Uh, I mean, it, it was gone in what, three holes, four holes? Yeah. Um, especially on a golf course like that, there's no way. You, like, uh, blowing a five-shot lead there, I, I would have been inter interested to see what the odds were if you would have if, if you could have taken the field versus Berger to win going into the last round. Because I bet you they weren't as lopsided as you might think. So five-shot lead on that golf course is not a – Obviously, it's not insurmountable because we saw it happen. No, no. A five-shot lead on any course with the best players in the world, like, you slip up a little bit, and some guys out there just freewheeling it. I mean, no hands on the steering wheel, and you got two hands on it. That's – it's gone. Wow. Yeah, see, that's, see, then that's perspective that, you know, we don't really know because we haven't been in that situation. So would you rather – Going into a Sunday, would you rather be tied for the lead or have a five-shot lead? Well, I've never had a five-shot lead going into Sunday. I would <laughs> take the five. You would? Yeah, five <laughs> shots. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you just I'm said five saying, shots ain't that much. I'm like, well, then wait a second. Not, five shots, there's a mentality. Is, is there a menta mentality worth five shots? Like... I don't, I don't know. Like, if Berger was leading by two shots to start the day, would he have won that tournament? Who knows? Um, I was listening to sports radio this morning on just Beck and Jacks on the app, and the, this guy was talking about, uh, you know, yeah, six-shot lead going into 18 on Saturday. And I didn't realize that, that he bogeyed 18 on Saturday. Yeah, it was that, the only bogey of the day. Okay. I mean, that's a big deal. Like, if he birdies 18, that's a seven-shot lead. Now, right. that might be hard to mess up. Uh, 
Does it change your day? And I mean, these are obviously questions I'm asking you because you're a pro and I don't know the first damn thing about being a, a tour pro, which is why we're here. Um, does it change your day on Saturday to make a bogey on the last hole? Does that change your night before you go into Sunday versus a birdie? Obviously, there's a you know two shot difference, but is it really tough? Is it difficult to get over a bogey in the last hole on Saturday? I don't. It's different. It depends on what kind of person you are. Um, some guys, it depends how you make bogey too. Like I don't know how he made it. He could have made if you make like a ten footer for bogey. No. I mean, you just saved a shot, you know, like that, that's how I would look at that. If I'm him and I bogey and I'm still got a five shot lead, I'm telling myself like I'm winning by five shots. Like I'm doing a lot of things right this week. That that's okay. Yeah. But it's, it's it's just like you said, it's hard to win on a PGA tour, no matter who you are. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I'm sure going to bed the night before, he, I mean, obviously you look at the leaderboard, Seb Straka had not won an event before. We know he's a good player, but it's probably not somebody he thought, hey, this guy, this is a guy I really got to keep an eye on. But at the end, he's the one that came up and beat him. Yeah, I don't think that happens either, Where unless it's like Tiger. I don't think it, people are like, oh, Brooks, like, I remember, like, I know I wouldn't think that way unless it was Tiger, but I, I, I doubt Berger was like, oh, this guy's at, I don't know what their scores were, but say two guys were at seven and one was at six and he's at 12. Right. And he's probably not think, thinking, oh, well, you know, Brooks is at six. I'm more worried about him than the two guys at seven and eight. Like, there's no way. You're so honed in on yourself. Um, if that guy does make a move, then maybe it creeps into your head, but nobody is immune to, to pressure, to the elements, to golf. I mean, you can, you can, you can hit good putts and they'll miss too. Uh, right. It's not, I'm sure, I'm sure he's, everyone's focused in on themselves. Yeah, for sure. How did you, uh, how did the merch line come about? So obviously the LFG uh, merch line is yours. It's doing very well. I see guys wearing it all over the place. Now I do live in Jacksonville and I know quite a few of, yeah. of your buddies who, uh, who wear it all the time. Uh, mm. My buddy Lewis wears it. I don't think, I don't know if Lewis has any other clothing than LFG clothing. Cause every time I see him, he's wearing something. Um, <laughs> how did, uh, how did the merch line come about? Uh, some, so, you know, that photo, I got fined for it pretty good. And it was during the pandemic where my buddies and I were just hanging around and we were like, this is a really cool logo. We should use this. And it kind of started off like, I don't even know, like at the start, if we were even going to do like a full line and then we were just making like t-shirts like this. And uh then it just worked out my buddy two of my friends they're in a spot where they can dive head first into this and i have time too now i've been doing a lot of that too um and it's been a blast for us we've gone we've gone in in two years it's grown I, i'm shocked where we are to be honest and it's grown so much i'm so proud of my buddies they do they do all the heavy lifting like i i do a little bit but they they're running the show and uh it's been a lot of fun for us um our stuff just keep it gets better and better every run um i'm learning a ton about the industry in general uh reaching out to a few people you know for help and we're it's getting to a point where you know we have big decisions to to make but they're good big decisions um and i'm excited to see where it goes that's cool man yeah i love the lfg yeah. line i think it's cool and it's funny when you wear it places people who know what it is are always like hey man i like your hat or i've got a shirt and actually my uh one of my towels in my bag is an lfg towel and so uh, I, people always see it and point it out i saw it one time uh or I've seen it, you know, a bunch, but one time I was playing a tournament and I was walking from one green to the next tee and uh, this guy had a hat on 
And I just said, nice hat. And he looked at me like I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea who you were. I'll tell you, I had, um, I went to my son's match. We live here in Jacksonville as well. My son went to uh, Nice High School. Okay. And we were playing a match at um, Ponte Vedra Training Club at the, uh, at the Lagoon Course. Yeah. And I'm walking with a guy, and we start talking golf, and he doesn't say anything about who he is or anything. And so I'm, of course, talking golf with him as if I know what I'm talking about. And this other lady taps me. And he had told me he liked my hat. And so another lady taps in my shoulder as he walked in. She said, do you know who that is you're talking to? And I'm like, no. She's like, it's Russell Knox. I'm like, oh, he's such a good dude. He's so nice. But he literally said that when he came back over, he started talking and he told me that he knew you and he, he knew who the brand was and all that. But it was a, it was really a cool moment where I had a chance to make myself look like a real dumbass talking to a PGA tour pro about what I knew about golf is he knows more than he's forgotten more than I know. He's such an ace. We play a lot, uh, I see him a lot. We both are at Pablo, and there's no, there's only like a couple of pros out there. I enjoy that guy's company so much. He is he is as good as it gets. He is. He's a super good dude. Well, Matt, yeah. man, I appreciate your time. Before we let you go, we do a thing called Emergency Nine. I'm going to ask you nine questions. Some of them have to do with golf. Some of them don't have a damn thing to do with golf. Okay. You just are give me the first thing that comes to your mind. Huh? Are they the same nine for everyone? No. Oh, no, no, no. No, they change. Oh, okay. No, they change. All right. Number one, what's your favorite tournament on the PGA Tour? Riviera. Riviera. All right. Number two, would you rather make a phone call or just send a text? You don't want to talk. Phone call. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's shocking. Most people, everybody's like text. I don't, I don't want to have, have a phone call with anybody. Uh, three, music on the golf course or no? Uh... I would say no, but I don't mind it. But if it was up to me, I would say no. No. All right. Uh, dumbest thing you've ever seen or heard from a fan? Oh, man. You should have given me these earlier so I could think. Um, you want me to come back to that one? Because I think you got a good story on that one. There was probably a good one in there. All right. We'll come back. That'll be number nine. We'll come back to that. Number five, player you would most be nervous to be paired with? tiger everybody says tiger that's that's pretty much the standard answer have you ever I, been paired with tiger no i think he'd be the only person i'd be nervous to be paired with all right if you weren't a pro golfer what would you be doing uh probably be on the back end or probably on the back end of like a 12 year career in the bigs oh nice okay i like that mm. uh most famous number in your cell phone? Depends who you ask. Who's famous? Um, I don't know, man. Are you talking about golfers or like other? Yeah, anybody. Anybody. You didn't uh, get Tom Brady's number yesterday, did you? No. <laughs> <yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, most famous person in my phone going through it. I don't. I don't. I don't. It's got to be don't. somebody. I mean, I have, yeah, there's a ton of people. I've ran, uh, Ryan Lochte. There's, he's a rando for uh, you. Yeah, no, Ryan Lochte. That's good. That, that counts. Uh, best or most memorable shot you have ever hit? Uh, best shot I ever hit. Most memorable for me is my second shot into 18, the second year I won Bay Hill. All right. What's your go-to karaoke song? It's karaoke time. Matt Every's on. What's your go-to song? Mm. And you don't have to sing any of it here. I'm not going to embarrass you. <laughs> uh, if it's that time, any song. Any song. Okay, really? Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. All right, let's go back to that. What's the dumbest thing you've heard or seen from a fan in a PGA Tour? I don't know. I mean, I've heard some funny things. <laughs> There's one thing that sticks out to me that I just giggle at. Um, what is it? We were at, it was actually at Bay Hill, but it was before I ever won there. I want to say it was 2012 or 13. And I had the rookie tee. I think it was like 12. And I had like a late tee time on 
Thursday or Friday. I was like one of the last, I was like the last group to finish on Friday. So everyone's kind of clearing out of the bleachers on, on uh, 18. We're walking up and there's just the only people there that are there still are hammered. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking up and I'm not kind of local there. And this guy, uh, he like, they announce your name when you're walking up to the green and they announce my name or whatever. And this guy yells like right after he goes, Hey, hometown, put the bong down. And I just giggled. So <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, it doesn't bother me, but I just, I just, the guys that I was playing with too lost it. It was so good. <laughs> That's awesome. How much Gator hate do you get out there? Because for some reason, they seem to hate us as, as Gators. I don't get that. Then on, uh, I don't know. It's hit or miss. I get a lot of love, too. Yeah, a lot uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I think Gator haters, I mean, I've kind of died out of college sports, too. I feel like Georgia went in just ruins college sports. Like, <laughs> just like... I- uh, what was that? What was that? You dropped out. Bama win everything. I don't. We don't need Georgia winning now. I mean, come on. I agree with you 100. percent When everybody was like, "Oh, don't you want Georgia to win?" I'm like, "No, no." As a Gator fan, no. I want Bama to win. I don't want Georgia. I just like to look at Georgia fans and say 1985. Now I can't say that anymore. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good now. <laughs> they are pretty good. Hopefully, uh, Napier will get us back where we can uh, be competitive at least. But they are good, man. They are. They definitely found a way to recruit. What do you mean? Are you saying they're cheating? Maybe they're doing things the Bama way. I don't know. It seems to work, right? You whatever it takes, man. <laughs> yeah, it's not cheating now with NIL. Now you can actually pay guys. So now, now it's not cheating anymore. We got to get out of that. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's definitely uh, not a good road for college sports. Don't you think it stunts the growth of like a? If you're an 18 year old kid, and obviously, you know, most 18 year olds don't have x amount of dollars and you sign like a a million dollar you're a stud quarterback you're a five star and you sign some one two million dollar deal mm-hmm. is that that's gotta mess with like your hunger and your growth it has to i mean yeah, i also wonder like okay so that's fine so the quarterback signs a two million dollar deal okay what are those offensive linemen getting because they're not getting shit but they're supposed to protect him all week like i just is just no way there, there, there's no way to even it out there's no way to even up, and then I heard like, te- and then you're gonna get these schools like only like Texas. I really heard, heard all their O linemen are getting, you know, X amount if they their starters. I mean, yeah, look at Texas A and M. They're they're they they say this is the most expensive recruiting class ever. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, if it works, I don't know what kind of pockets does Florida have. I don't know. We got some rich alumni somewhere that'll pour into the coffers because, yeah, I mean, it looks like that's where it's that's where it's headed. We need Billy Horschel to start paying some people. He won that FedEx. Billy, we've had Billy on the program quite a few times, and Billy Billy loves the Gators. And I see now he's back uh, being a, a volunteer coach with the, with, with the Gator golf team now. Is he? Yeah, I think I saw that too. I talked to him the other day. Uh, he's like Mr. Gator. He is. He, yeah, he is. He's, 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 a, he's, he's a little more Gator on his sleeve than DeMarco and you both put together. I'm not even, dude, don't lump me in with those two guys. The, that, those guys are like the fanatics. They, they go to get paint on. Um, I'm, I, this is the Gator I am. I root for them. If they're on TV, I'll watch. The second they lose two games, I'm out. You're out. <laughs> I'm out. Your season's, out, season's over. Two games, yeah. I'm out. And it doesn't matter if you you got to win everything now to win in college football. If you if you don't go undefeated, you got a really tough road. Yeah, that's good. Well, Matt, thanks so much, man. I appreciate you being uh, open with us, and and good luck with your uh, with everything getting back into the game. Where can we see you? I know we see you this week at Puerto Rico. Where can we see you moving forward? This week, Puerto Rico. Um, I don't know. I, I'll probably get in that Dominican tournament. I'm probably going to do some Mondays. And then the clothing stuff. And then I got some TV, a little bit of everything. Good deal. And, you know, follow him on social media at Matt Every LFG. And you can also get some cool merch there as well. So uh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon here on the podcast, man. Thank you so much. See you guys. Bye.